Well, greetings and salutations, SIE test takers. This is Dean Tenney, also known as the Series 7 Guru, coming to you from my studio here in uh, fabulous Las Vegas uh, with the first episode of a five-episode podcast series on the SIE exam. We have uh, done a complete podcast episode on the 65. A lot of test takers found it helpful. So thought I would uh, do the same here for the SIE exam. Uh, there's already uh, lots of free resources available besides this podcast series to help you pass your SIE, SIE exam. In fact, the number one free resource or to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. And you can find two SIE playlists that some test takers actually use as their primary study uh, material. There will now be, you know, three playlists for the SIE. This will be the third, a five-episode podcast series on the exam itself. Uh, but there already is two SIE playlists on the channel. The first is a, a bunch of lectures, basically, uh, that are available. And uh, the, no, oh, I don't know how many are in there. There's lots. But uh, a couple I would highlight for you is in that playlist, you can find an explication of the content outline as published by FINRA. Explication means, you know, a, a fancy word for a more detailed explanation of each item on there. I will link in the description and pinned comments to these uh, other uh, resources that are available uh, to you. Uh, one of our most popular videos that's contributed to thousands and thousands of SIE testing victories uh, is the SIE exam in 60 minutes. I recommend this the night before or morning of your exam, or both, right? Just to get in kind of the flow, so you're not warming up on actual performance opportunities. The second playlist that is on the YouTube channel already are a bunch of SIE exam practice tests and questions. Uh, again, uh, there's lots of exams there from different, many different vendors, uh, Kaplan, uh, Mometrix, uh, Knopman, Test Geek, and uh, the two, though, I would highlight to you is the FINRA practice exam. You should definitely go to the FINRA website, print out the content outline, as well as print out or take at some point. Towards the end of your study, I would recommend to get a mark, the FINRA practice exam. You can do it online. But you can watch me do it, hit pause, uh, answer, hit play, see how you do. And then I create a doppelganger version of that. What I did was take the FINRA wording and answer set and kind of flip it. So it looks like the same answer set, however, what were wrong answers would now be correct answers. So those are two that I would highly recommend to you. Now, as a paid uh, study materials, because you should always have some paid study materials, uh, I recommend Kaplan. And Kaplan contracts with the Guru Exam Prep LLC, which is me, to teach the SIE class for them, typically the first month of each quarter. So you're welcome to join me for that three-day class. If you need a Kaplan uh, class or QBank or license exam manual or whatever you need, uh, we do have uh, for my listeners, my viewers, uh, my subscribers, a 15% discount code. That's Guru15 at uh, checkout. That's the 15% discount code. Now, in terms of the SIE exam, and this podcast episode is an introduction to that exam, you don't need any sponsorship to take the SIE. However, most of you, this is going to be the first testing victory before you move on to your second testing victory, which would be typically a six or a seven. So I highly recommend that you overlearn this content because that's what you kind of really need to get done. Now, if you are doing this on your own, well, kudos to you. You are demonstrating initiative. And I think if you decide you want to get a job in the uh, industry, the securities industry, uh, then you would already have this uh, already done. And that makes you a less of a speculative investment in human capital because they know you've taken and passed that first test. The test itself is 75 multiple choice questions. I like to call them performance opportunities. You know, 10 of them are on scores. So that means you have a total of 85 questions. You have one hour and 45 minutes to get 70% of those questions correct. Now, you shouldn't have a time constraint. I can't prove it, but if you have a time constraint, it's bad because that means you're turning recognition, aim and shoot, point and click questions into judgment questions that aren't there. You know, the three styles of questions you get on the exam are recognition, regular way settlement is T plus one, for example, 
Uh, options expire on third Friday, 11.59 p.m. for the next three months. You know, practical application, current yield, adjustments for stock dividends and splits, that kind of thing. Can't be given that up. And then judgment questions. Uh, not too many judgment questions on the SIE. A few practical application, lots of recognition, lots of recognition. As I mentioned, you need a passing score of 70%. And uh, as I said, don't uh, just barely get out of this thing. Don't barely pass. Overlearn each and every one of these sections we're going to discuss and have a podcast episode on, right? So I'm not going to do the podcast episodes in the order of the SIE content outline. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because I want to do it based on weighting. So the first uh, section on the content outline is knowledge of capital markets. That's 12 questions, that's 16% of your exam. And in that podcast episode, we will be discussing the SEC, who has primary jurisdiction, interpretation, and enforcement of the domestic securities laws of the United States of America. We'll talk about FINRA, the self-regulatory organization for the securities industry, the one who's you know the sponsor of this SIE exam. We'll be talking about the state administrators, you know, as a retail investor, I'm coming from the state of Nevada. Uh, on the federal level, as a retail investor, the SEC protects me. And on the local level, it would be my state administrator. They have their own uh, organization called the North American Securities Administrator Association. So I think of the SEC is God in the securities industry, and state administrators think they are. Don't tell them I said that. <laughs> but a lot of you will be taking a NASA exam as well, a 63, 65, or 66 those do not require sponsorship uh, either. Uh, FINRA exams, six, seven do. Uh, we'll be talking that episode about the Security Investor Protection Corporation, you know, $500,000 uh, coverage and how much can be cash and what do we mean by per separate account. We'll be talking about the FDIC in that podcast episode. We'll be talking about market participants and their roles. So there we'll be talking about uh, broker dealers, investment advisors, uh, market makers, issuers, uh, underwriters, and uh, what they do, what they're about. We'll be talking about market structure. We'll be talking about the primary and secondary market. Primary market is where the issuer receives the proceeds. Secondary market is where the previous owner receives the proceeds. We'll be talking about the third market, listed securities traded over the counter. We'll be talking about the fourth market direct trading between institutions. We'll be talking about economic factors. We'll be talking about monetary and fiscal policy. Monetary policy being the money supply, the Federal Reserve Board, interest rates. You know, I always joke, if anybody asks you about economics, finance, or investments, you want to sound smart, you should say it has a lot to do with interest rates. And you just shut up, you sound good. People say, well, what about them? You say they fluctuate. They say, is that good news or bad news? You say, well, it depends. You, know, you want to be smart, say, well, I'm watching the Fed. You know, and how does interest rates control international trade, the value of the dollar, things like that. Uh, we already have economics lectures available on the channel, but uh, we'll be talking about that in that podcast episode as well. We'll be talking about uh, fiscal policy, government spending and taxation, who controls it, Congress and the president. And we'll be talking about Lord John Maynard Keynes and demand side economics. We'll talk about GDP. We'll be talking about the business cycle, uh, that kind of thing. Now, if any one of these podcast episodes becomes too much, I'll probably break it up because I uh, don't, you know, I don't know. You can put in comments what you think a podcast episode should be. I'm thinking 30 minutes. I think longer than most people, but I'm thinking 30 minutes an episode. So we have to break it up. I know in the S65 podcast series, I was thinking that's going to be five episodes. I think it ended up being seven. So it is what it is. Uh, we'll be talking about the offerings, 33. 33 says you're going to sell brand new securities to the public. You have to make a registration statement, hence the term registered securities. And then we'll be talking about are there ways to sell unregistered securities? The answer is yes. We'll be talking about, you know, Reg A, or Reg A plus. Uh, we'll be talking about Rule 147. We'll be talking about Reg D. We'll be talking about pipe. We'll be talking about uh, shelf registrations, uh, if we do make a registration statement, the cooling off period, all that kind of stuff, uh, the prospectus. Uh, we'll follow that podcast episode, again, maybe out of sequence because we're doing it by waiting, but section two will be a podcast episode. You see, this is the big one, 44% exam, 33 questions. So again, uh, we'll probably do this as our second episode. 
and we'll break it up if need be. But in here, we'll be talking about uh, equity securities. We'll be talking about common and preferred stock. We'll be talking about rights, warrants, and ADRs, you know, and the benefits, uh, risks, and rewards of those. We'll be talking about debt instruments. We'll be talking about the issuers of debt instruments. We'll be talking about corporate issuers of debt securities. And we'll be talking about their corporate and unsecured, uh, corporate secured bonds, unsecured bonds. We'll be talking about municipal issuers of securities, geos and revenues. And we'll be talking about the U.S. government as an issuer of debt securities. You're held accountable for three issuers of debt securities, corporations, municipalities, and the U.S. government will be doing that in that episode. We might need to break it up. Uh, it's a lot in this episode because, again, or this section, uh, we'll be talking about options. We'll talk about puts and calls. Most of the option questions on the SAE, there's only three or four of them. Most of them are recognition. Uh, but we'll be talking about the type of contracts there are, calls and puts. We'll talk about equity versus index options. And we'll talk basically about some strategies. You know, as I said, the vast majority of the questions on the SIE about options are recognition, like when do they expire? Uh, what's the difference between American and European style uh, exercise? That kind of the thing, right? Uh, test, again, recognition about the OCC disclosure uh, uh, document and how they assign exercise notices. So mostly uh, recognition. Uh, don't sell short, pun intended, uh, the amount of questions you're going to get on the SIE exam on what are called packaged products. You know, packaged products are open-end funds, the traditional open-end mutual fund that has traditionally an A share and be able to contrast A shares, B shares, and C shares and be able to contrast a closed-end fund with a traditional open-end fund. Uh, know what is a unit investment trust. Uh, variable annuities, how they work. Variable annuities, I, I think of as mutual funds with insurance wrappers, uh, REITs, direct participation programs. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on DPPs. How are exchange traded funds different than traditional open end mutual funds? And how are exchange traded notes different than an exchange traded fund? You know, basically, one is an equi equity instrument, one's a debt. And we'll talk about that in the episode. Uh, hedge funds. That are organized as private uh, partnerships. And, you know, again, whether it's offerings, whether it's Reg D or whether it's here, we need to know, uh, you know, what that definition of a credit investor is. Because if you're not a credit investor, no hedge fund for you. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, investment risks are also in that section. And so that'll be maybe, maybe we won't be able to get that done in one episode. Maybe that'll become two or three episodes. We'll see as we uh, make the next episode, see where we get in terms of that. So that leads us to section three, understanding trading, customer accounts, and prohibited activities. That's uh, 23 questions on the exam. It's the second heavily weighted area on the SIE exam. So here we'll be talking about types of orders. We'll be talking about market orders, uh, limit orders, stop orders, uh, GTC, discretionary orders, solicited versus unsolicited. We'll be talking about the bid and the ask. We'll be talking about trade capacity, whether you were a broker or a dealer in the trade, your firm. We'll be talking about long or short. Uh, we'll talk about some of the investment returns you're held accountable for. For example, uh, current yield, uh, some of the uh, benchmarks and indexes we use. Uh, settlement, everything is T plus one. Everything, or excuse me, everything is T plus two, except you know, gubbies and options, which are T plus one, but that'll be part of that episode to talk about regular way settlement and irregular ways to uh, settle trades. So regular settlement for corporates and munis is uh, T plus two. We'll talk about various types of corporate actions. You do have to be able to uh, deal with one corporate action called a stock split or a stock dividend, and the impact it will have on the market price of the stock and your customer's cost basis. And we'll be talking about that in that episode. We'll also be talking about customer accounts. We'll be talking about cash accounts where a customer intends to pay in full. We'll be talking about margin accounts where he intends to pay part of the purchase price and would like the broker dealer to lend them the balance. We'll be talking about discretionary versus non-discretionary accounts. We'll be talking about the 529s, educational accounts versus, you know, Coverdales. We'll be talking about how to register the account, joint tenants with rights or survivorship. 
versus tenants in common. And so that might, as I said, take up a lot of our, our time. Might be one more than one episode. We'll be talking about anti-money laundering as found in section three. Here we'll be talking about currency transaction reports. Uh, we'll be talking about suspicious activity reports. We'll be talking about FinCEN. Uh, we'll be talking about the Office of Foreign Asset Control. And we'll be talking about record retention. We'll also be talking about uh, communications. Very testable to know the difference between retail communication versus correspondence and what that means in terms of principal approval, pre or post distribution. Uh, we'll be talking about maintaining a do not call list. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about in that episode, prohibited activities, uh, market uh, manipulation. We'll be talking about market rumors. We'll be talking about uh, pumps and dumps, trading ahead of customers, front running, excessive trading, churning. We'll be talking about backing away from a firm quote. We'll talk about taking a free ride, buying and selling a security that you haven't paid for. That will be uh, in that episode. All right. So uh, we'll also be talking about sharing and customer accounts. Kind of weird one. That's a weird one. You can do that with a principal approval in proportion of capital. So that will lead us with our last uh, section of the content outline, which is uh, section four, an overview of the regulatory framework. It's only seven questions, surprisingly, 9%. Uh, and we'll be doing that episode last because of the waiting. So this one will be doing last and is last in the uh, section content outline uh, as published by uh, FINRA. So here we'll be talking about uh, registration, you know, that U4 uh, that you fill out to become an associated person and what we call reasons for statutory disqualification. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, continuing ed, uh, both the firm element and the regulatory element. And we'll be talking about the code of conduct, the ethical behavior that is, uh, broker dealers and associated persons owe customers. So hope you found this uh, first episode uh, to be uh, helpful. Uh, episode two coming shortly to a theater near you. <laughs> Joking. Remember, uh, inch by inch, your SIE is a cinch. Yard by yard, your SIE is hard. Uh, be sure to put in the comment box. Uh, what you would like covered in the episodes, assuming this is, uh, you know, not already all five episodes are done. So if you're getting this in a timely fashion, you only see one episode done, uh, you can have some input on this. I've also been thinking, I'd be interested in your thoughts uh, in terms of a poll uh, about whether we should do these episodes live or not. So uh, tell me your preference in the comment box, assuming you don't already see five episodes. If you do, that means it's too late. Uh, but if you uh, have thoughts on whether we should do it live and you could do Q&A as we go through it, uh, I'm open to that. Okay, so uh, like I say, hope to see you for episode two of this uh, podcast episodes. And again, remember, inch by inch, SIE is a cinch, yard by yard, SIE is hard. The Kaplan Guru discount is Guru15 at checkout. Bye-bye.